Welcome to Queens College Physics students. This is your magnetic field lab. Uh, you have to start by going to pasco.com, P-A-S-C-O.com. Find the download link for the Capstone software. Download the latest version, which is the Capstone 2.0. Install it. Uh, then you should go to Blackboard and download this file. Uh, the magnetic field dot cap. When you have them all safely down on your computer, you can open this file. When you open it, this is what you'll see. The first page, the introduction, is a recreation of the uh, theory from the online lab manual. Uh, everything is in the online manual and you should follow it, but I've done some different things, so we'll have to talk about them as we go. Um, the second page is the equipment. Uh, the equipment we've used, I've given you an image uh, and I've uh, talked about it. You can look in the online manual again for a, an actual list. Um, this is just to let you see what we're doing. Um, on the right are two images of a caliper, a vernier caliper, uh, which are allow you to measure the two uh, necessary measurements of the coils, the diameter and the coil length. The report is just some ideas for what you should be including in your report. The abstract uh, should be brief. This is not meant to be onerous. Um, uh, an abstract is typically uh, a synopsis of what's going on in the experiment. But here you should think about what you think you're going to learn from the lab. Uh, you could make predictions. Uh, is B versus N going to be linear or quadratic or something weird? Um, you could also uh, talk about what you think we are trying to, uh, to teach you by selecting these procedures. The equipment should be a very brief list of the equipment, uh, how it's to be used. Uh, there are some things that you could mention that you should talk about. For instance, the uh, magnetic field sensor is set to axial. And why would that be um, is an interesting question that you should be able to work out on your own. Um, and I guess we'll look at other things as we go along. The data. All data should be in tables. Um, you're making an infographic here, so you should organize the table in a way that is clearly understandable. Uh, you can use Office or Google Docs or Open Office, whatever you like. Uh, but uh, in this lab particularly, you have to actually plot some data. So some Excel-like application is absolutely essential. Uh, once you've created what you have to, you can cut and paste it into a Word document and complete your report there. You should only have one page to submit or one file to submit for your report. The conclusions. Uh, this is the meat of the report. Uh, what did you learn or what did you think you learned? Uh, you should be talking about referring to the, uh, the data and the learning goals from the abstract. You should also answer any post lab questions, which I've added on the end of this page. From there, we go to the procedures where the data is housed. But before we do that, I want to take a second and show you how I collected this data. To do that, I've got another file. This is the file I have set up just to show you how I'm going to collect the data. Uh, the hardware setup is a rotary motion sensor, a black box on the back. It's meant to track its position along that rail. The blue device is the magnetic field sensor set to axial. And that rod runs through, it's got a a Hall effect sensor that runs through the middle of the coil and detects the magnetic field. I start out here, well away from it. And now let's look at the power that we're going to use to drive the field. I have this as a DC current uh, set to 0.3 volts. Why 0.3 volts? Well, this device has a current limiting of one and a half amps which means we can't exceed one and a half amps without getting uh, spurious readings. So to stay below that on a 200 turn coil, which is essentially just a longish piece of wire, 
uh, with very low resistance, we have to stay with a very low voltage. And we're ready to go. So I hit record. I reach behind here and I press the tear button, zeroing the sensor. Uh, you can't see it, but I promise you it's there. And then I slowly work through until I get to the other side. And you see you get a nice curve where the, uh, sorry, it disappears because of the way I'm doing this. But I can rerun it as I push it through. You'll see that I get a nice curve with an increasing magnetic field as it goes through the coil. And that's the data that you're going to analyze. For the second procedure, I have to start here because before I do anything else, I want to find where that peak is. I want my Hall effect sensor on the end of that rod to be at a maximum point. That's perfect. And stop. I not really care about this data. Uh, I want to move to this one. Here I've done something quite a bit different from what's in the setup because I can. Here I have the same hardware setup, but the signal generator, I've put in a positive ramp instead of simple DC. That means it's going to go from negative, whatever I set the voltage to be, to positive, whatever I set the voltage to be. And here I've set it to 1.3. Again, why have I set it to 1.3? Because I want to hit that limit, but not exceed the 1.5 current limit. Um, it's set to run at 1.5 hertz, which means uh, it takes two seconds to complete a full cycle. Uh, that's just to give us some time to turn it on and off without getting a massive dump of data. And uh, we're good. It's set to auto, so I don't really have to worry about whether it's on or off. I hit record and I get that and now I can stop it. So this one is set as a uh, linear fit but of course we have some spurious data here. Uh, this thing is the data we're interested in clearly but this point here is obviously just something uh, an artifact of where the uh, the sensor started reading and this is where it jumps back to zero before it starts to cycle over again we should be able to get rid of that data like that and now we don't need this and now you have a straight line. Uh, R is 1. Can't get much better than that. And it has a slope. Uh, and in this case, I, I've told students before that if you're plotting physical quantities on the x and y axis, then your slope has to be some physical quantity. In this case, it's a complex quantity. And that's part of the analysis is that you figure out exactly what's included in that analysis. So now let's go back to the other file and look at the, the data I've saved for you. Under procedure one, you should see this is familiar by now. Uh, there's two ways you can uh, find that peak, which is what you're asked to do. Uh, you can use the statistics, uh, not the mean, that's not going to be helpful, but the maximum will. And hit the maximum button and you get a maximum field of zero. Well, clearly that's not very useful. The difficulty here is that there is so many decimal points in that reading that it's cutting them off by counting significant uh, figures improperly. We can fix this. We can go here, uh, click on magnetic field sensor, click on the little gear icon, and simply change the numerical format to scientific notation. And we can get rid of this. And there, now you have something sensible. 
So if you were to look very closely, you're actually getting the maximum field of a particular point rather than the maximum field of this whole uh, set of points. That may work. It may be close enough that it'll work, but something you can do that's actually a little more similar, useful, is to get a highlighter and simply come up here and take the mean of several points. Like that. It won't be very different, but you'll be more certain uh, when you're not getting something that's a little bit crazy. Another thing on this graph that you should notice is that it does not start at zero. It should start at zero, um, but there seems to be a flaw in the way this sensor works. One of the things you may want to talk about in your report is does that uh, small starting value uh, matter to our uh, data. Is it negligible or not? Uh, you can measure it using the uh, one of the tools up here and see if you think it's going to make a difference. Procedure two, I've already shown you, it's a straight line and you're simply going to find the linear fit. Since this data is quite good, uh, it's uh, very linear, and it gives you a slope you can work with to complete the analysis of hunting. Uh, that's it. Um, if you have any questions, ask your instructor. Bye now.